Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. As we introduce you to some of the most exciting stewards in the water industry and in the water business, I have a quick little story I want to open the show with. When I was nine years old, I was involved in tournament tennis and had a wonderful teacher named Michael Amador from Mexico. And two years after Mr. Amador was training me, he said he had to leave and go to another city. And prior to him leaving, he had the kindness to walk me over to the Beverly Hills Tennis Club, where a renowned champion tennis player walked onto the court and said, hey baby, I'm Poncho. Pancho Segura. I'm your new coach. <laughs> now, of course, I didn't know what that meant at age nine because I didn't really know what I was contending with. What I was told is he was one of the top tournament tennis players in the world, a world champion, and a fabulous teacher. But it was at that time in my life where I met a master teacher. And one of the things I learned from Pancho that got translated through the oral tradition had to do with the information about energy. And this is something that really is not taught in schools. We don't learn about energy in schools. But I'll tell you this, when you walk into a tennis tournament, you can feel the difference between the first match, the round of 16, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the finals. Something about the atmosphere changes. And it is exactly about that atmosphere change that we are going to introduce you to not only some wonderful stewards and pioneers, but some great teachers. Also, I want to tell you that, you know, we don't learn in school, and we certainly don't learn from friends and associates that our skin breathes, that it absorbs both what is in the air and what is in the water. That means that when you and I bathe and shower, that the skin absorbs not only as much, but what I've heard is more than even what's in the drinking water. Now you say, what does that have to do with today's segment, which is on water composition and frequency? You see, somebody also has not told the masses that water has memory. Memory the way an elephant has memory. And that this memory is acute. Well, I'm not going to talk about this because really I'm not in the league of appropriateness to be talking about this the way my guests are. And let's get to these guests. We want to welcome to its rainmaking time, Bill Cox. He is the founder of Primary Water Associates. He is a renowned water locator or dowser. He is one of the people along with his mentor and pioneer Vern Cameron who was responsible for filling what was then the droughted up Lake Elsinore. And he has found and is bringing to the world new water from humanity. Welcome to It's Rainmaking Time, Bill Cox. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I also want to invite in and welcome with big hugs, John Evans. John Evans, who is from Alaska Giant, a renowned researcher, a microbiologist and scientist who has invented and discovered a way to stimulate the soil in a way that requires little to no fertilizer. Please welcome to its rainmaking time, John Evans. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. And let's not forget he's from Ireland. <laughs> he's come a long way to be in Alaska. Also, okay. let us invite Paul Baraccia. Paul is a technical installation expert in the field of drinking water filtration. He is specializing in reverse osmosis, deionization, and remineralization. He has been involved in the interest of bringing safe drinking water to people in California, has fought very hard to keep fluoridation out of the water here. Welcome, Paul Baraccia. Paul, thank you good for, morning. For having thank me you on for the show, being Kim. here. And also, I would like to welcome as our special guest, Manfred Bauer, a wonderful man, a scientist, a researcher, part shaman, and how can you be part shaman? You're either full shaman or, or you're not, who is going to explain to us the mysteries of the spin of water, the direction of the flow of water. Manfred Bauer from Sante Natural Products, good morning and welcome. Thanks, Kip, and I uh, hope we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a wonderful time. John Evans, are you there? I am here. It seems like we have a, an international set of uh, <laughs> intellects here. <laughs> 
I thought what we might do is begin the show, really. I'm, I'm so pleased to have all of you here. And I think it's difficult to have people that are front runners in a field come together even if they agree on some parts of the page, if they are bringing in different contributions. I see this as a kind of synergy this morning that you're all bringing. I have tremendous respect for you, and that's why I think it's essential that you come together, and I'm honored to bring you together. I'd like, John, if we could start for just a moment with John Evans, I'd like you to share a little bit with the public what you have done in agriculture, because when we think of safe drinking water and we think of purifying water, bringing water that has a composition that is inherently clean, we don't always think of it in terms of agriculture. So I'd like you to share a little bit about yourself and your work and what you have found. Well, um, it's fairly difficult to put in perspective just over you know a few minutes. But basically what I've been studying for oh, 20, 30 years is the, the microbiology of the soil and the interaction with the plants and also water and how it affects the plants, oxygen, you name it. What I've done through trial and error, I would say you would put the little pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together throughout the years and um, I've come up with a system that will enhance growing like it's unbelievable worldwide it's very difficult to uh, to explain everything there is a symbiosis within the microbiology of the soil that interacts with the roots and a lot more nutrients are able to be processed and taken up into the plants could you give me some more specific questions you have been working with nordic living water systems and you have been using the structures that have to do with changing the frequency of water. And that's how you and I actually met and talked to each other. I'd like you to share with the audiences before we bring in the other gentlemen, what has this effect on what you're doing? Because, you know, you're already a pioneer in your field. Mm -hmm. So being the, a pioneer in your field, what is it about living water? Can you explain living water before we bring Manfred in? Okay, what I can explain it this way. I've studied water, and I've, knew, I've known there is, was a very long, a good connection with the structure of water, and it was, it's one of those uh, where you have uh, like an intuition. Years and years ago, that there was something profound in water, whether it's from a mountain stream or a dead lake, and the availability of the oxygen and also the mineralization and the energy in water itself. It, it gives you an idea where people who, lives in, who live in, on mountains, they have longer lives and so on. But what happened with me, I've tried magnets, I've tried hydrogen peroxide and all the other gizmos that you've got out there. And then I started studying about imploded water, and I did a lot of research on imploded water, and then it kind of directed me towards Mikhail. Okay, but, and, the, but um, hold on one second here, John. Implosion water, is that the water from Victor Schoberger that he yes, writes about? Is. Can you explain it? Or actually, Manfred, are you there? I'm still here. Okay, Manfred, can you explain what implosion water is? Well, everything in nature is working under the implosion effect. The only guys who are using explosion effects are humans, like the explosion motor. What so does that mean? Everything what is natural working is using the implosion system. And everything what is artificially working, what we construct is using the explosion. That means you ignite something and something expands. Uh, the implosion is different. It doesn't expand. It Let's say if you have a picture tube from a TV, as a simple example, and you blow it apart, you throw a stone at it, it will implode. That means because in the picture tube is a vacuum, you break the picture tube and it becomes, you can't see it because it goes very fast, it becomes very small because the vacuum is gone, and that's what we, it's a simple explanation for implosion. Talk a little bit about, John, you've been using this kind of implosion structure from Nordic Living Water Systems Talk about what you're finding. Okay. Well, I, I think I want to put that a bit more succinctly as far as imploded water. You can look at it in many ways, from a tornado to shells. Everything has got a spiral going inwards, 
and more energy when it goes inwards, more energy is taken into 